everything is uh, static here. The only thing I'm not quite happy with is this sonar, but I can uh, probably deal with that. Yeah, the other thing I'm looking at too is your altitude. So you got plenty of um, you got plenty under the keel, as it were. You're not gonna you're not in danger of touching the bottom. So the delta is not as important. Uh, it's more about giving me the leash at the moment, so we could actually be on par, and it wouldn't be an issue because um, as long as we have the weight coming underneath, and I'm not pulling the tether into Atlanta. There's no uh, one size fits all, by the way. <laughs> it's going to change situationally, uh, constantly. Uh, Rennie, I'm ready for a move, whichever way you want to go. We're stretched out here. I'm 30 meters away. Yeah, so we landed okay. uh, safely in a purposefully in what we thought was a flatter, uh, based on the previous dive reports, a silty uh, bottom, safe for the ROVs, especially with new operators. And then we've been moving the ship a couple of moves to a sonar target that represented the east, steep east wa wall of this canyon. And uh, we think that to the south, shallower, uh, is where we'll find the columnar formations that were referenced in the previous reports. And so one final ship move here to start. Can you make a two zero move at bearing one one zero? Correct, thank you. Now it's getting the final, this move in and then we'll explore uh, up the face of this wall a bit and then we'll move uh, shallower trying to you know, enjoy this, but also find these columnar basalt formations. Yeah, cool. I don't know why I'm not getting a good return on that machine. It's I think I'm okay. frustrating. Yeah. I want contrast up. There we go. That's better. Contrast down. <coughs> I don't know why that machine is not saving its settings. It's very frustrating. Uh, we're stepping closer to the wall. Closer to the wall? You're crazy. Roger that. I was, I was listening half a great half of my brain on the move. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I think I think I'm good. Yeah. So okay. Roger. All right, cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Johan knows where we're going, where the waypoint is and all that. Uh yes. Yes. Roger. What is the general range of bearing to the uh, <coughs> uh the final destination? It is And just to verify, our current move is one zero zero, right? Correct. All right. See, I was listening. So just stepping towards the wall. The general range of bearing is about eleven hundred meters. Eleven hundred. One six five. That's an hour away. I think it's kind of just a general survey until we find something, and we'll. Roger. Stop yeah, I concur. Observe.
Hey, Bob. There's a headset there to Dr. Ballard if you want. You can start to see this cylinder formations. Uh, Jonathan, did you get control of both the cameras there? Yep. You're all good? Yep. Sweet. Uh, so on this element, we're going to start doing the uh, photogrammetry image pulls. Uh, what is the current status of the ROV and where are we going to be going? The current status of the ROV is uh, we are on the wall and we have a waypoint 1,100 meters away, which is an hour over an hour away oh. at like transit speed. And obviously we can't do that on a vertical wall, so I'm not sure what's up there, but we are going to generally start poking our way towards, um, as I understand it, along this wall. Okay. Uh, are we gonna do? Would you prefer going vertical, horizontal? What's uh, what's ROV's preference uh, here? Uh, it's not up to me. Navigator's driving the boat. I'm just kind of following wherever he moves uh, Atlanta. So I think we're we're uh, gonna cover a bit of ground to try to find this the columnar formations before we hunker down, Jonathan, for a big survey. All right. right I'll uh, I'll be patient. I'm gonna run some. Kind of test data until then, okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's, good, that's good columnar joining on the top, but it's just the wrong orientation, right? It looks blocky. Is, yep. um, does anyone know if Norbit is running? Uh, no, I can call the data lab. Uh, you might as well uh, preempt that if you can, Pete, and do uh, put, uh, as we discussed before, so uh, pick a PC and put the Norbit into it, and then uh, put it up in H11 for Copy that. I'm not sure where I'm at. Sorry? I do? Yeah. Roger. Okay, moving on. Yep. I'm going to uh, come up a bit, and uh, so you can chase me up as we okay. are moving. So the vessel's moving, uh, bearing of one zero zero. You can uh, stick in another move there towards the waypoint. Roger that. Not very impressive or uh, scary up here. There you go. All right, if it's good with pilot, I'll start stepping southwest at two zero zero degrees. Two zero zero. We're kind of at an angle from this wall. If you're facing it, then that's going to take us away from on. the wall. Okay. <laughs> Do you think around 180 would be better? Uh, if we want to stay on the wall. So, uh, Jason, Roger. are you there? I am. Go ahead. Uh, so waypoint two will take us off the wall. Do you want to move along the wall in that direction? Or? Yep. That's a just a general. Roger. Roger. Heading. We're we're on our own to explore until we find it. Okay. Thank you, Pete. Um, and thank you, Jason. Yep. Uh, Argus, or uh, sorry, Atlanta, um, or Nav, you guys work it out. So we want to move along the wall to the south. Roger. Roger. And I would say uh, that is uh, 
You can use Herx heading to work that out. So that first number you mentioned uh, might be something to the right. So that that bearing, we want to move that way. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I can't totally multitask here. Uh, that's about two one zero. How about two one zero? What did you say in the beginning there? Uh, two zero zero. Yeah. Um. Let's try that two zero zero. All right. We'll get Atalanta a little bit closer to the wall. <laughs> Five zero meters at two zero zero. Roger. Sorry. Bridge, Sorry. this is Nav. It's going to take me a minute to get into the game here. No problem. Can we move five zero meters at two zero zero bearing? Back with our sea cucumber. Great, thank you. Oh, yeah, look like at that sea cucumber. Another Anipdiastes, or headless chicken monster. <laughs> Do we know about the fish? Yeah, I think it might be a cutthroat eel. I would have to get closer. Oh, wow. I'm not that good at IDing fish, from especially from far away. Did but I think it might be closer? a cutthroat. Oh, we don't have to, no. But the, um, to ID, yeah. The cutthroat eel is displaying that uh, typical behavior. Opening the, its mouth. And yeah, where they get irritated. You're too close to me. Yeah, it might shake its head at us, tell yeah. us to go That's away. pretty cool. <laughs> and then I think that is a bamboo coral, but I can't tell from here. Um, but yeah, it might be a bamboo. Taylor, I you're starting to sound like a scientist. You can't tell. <laughs> Get closer. <laughs> You've been hanging around Steve too long. Yeah, I'm going to be asking for too many zooms. Yeah. So I think uh, we've got our uh, our ducks in a row, as it were, in the front row here. So we've figured out kind of where the wall. I have took me a minute to work it out, figure out where the wall is and which way we need to move the boat to uh, yep. get towards the general waypoint. And as it happens, it was exactly as you planned it. Ship is starting to attract the move. Roger. What's uh, we can make the vessel speed uh, 0.3 if he's not already. I see 0.15 on my. Uh, what do you plug in there? He plugged in 0.3. Awesome. 10 meters a minute. <laughs> Tether's looking perfect. Y'all can do the math. We have 1,100 meters to go, and we're going there at 10 meters a minute which uh, gives Hercules plenty of time to stop and smell the flowers. All right. That's our uh, typical kind of transit speed through any kind of technical terrain, which I believe uh, call them their wall of basalt qualifies as. So you see now where I am. So what's happening now, Juan, is um, I am south of Atalanta and I'm struggling to stay perpendicular to the wall because our tether's tight so because the tether's coming out of the back of Hercules if I let go of the sticks it wants to come around and, and put its six looking at uh, Atalanta and also you'll see your thrusters start to wind up as I do that, so that typically means I'm uh, getting impatient and getting too far ahead, or at this step, we've just started the vessel move and it hasn't really started moving a lot yet. But that's an example of a tight tether. And which, uh, so the other th number I look at all the time is the altitude, and because it's an analog altimeter on uh, Atlanta, that number will be all over the place, but you can also get that in your Grafana, kind of the average of it. And it will get more, uh, it will be more erratic in weather as Atlanta's pitching up and down, but right now it's pretty calm, so it's, you know, not too noisy. Um, 
but it wouldn't hurt if you uh, came down five this meters. Is if you came down five meters, that will give me a bit more leash to uh, to come around here and uh, square up on some of the uh, flora and fauna that were geology and biology that we're seeing here. What do you think from way out here? Taylor Ann, is it purple or is it red? That is pink. pink. Okay. <laughs> I, was, I was hoping for purple, but... It's either, yeah, I think it's a hemichorallium. Uh, it looks more fragile uh, than a bubblegum coral would be, a little more fine. So I, I think that's a hemichorallium. You want yep. to uh, push in on it real quick there, Pete? Sure, and I'll try to focus at the same time. Yeah, we appreciate that. Yeah, so that's a hemichorallium with a, a ophiroid I'm, I'm good, maybe. or a brittle star. Uh, stand by. It's a typical association we see with these species. Uh, no, I'm good. I had a huge breakfast, so yeah, I'm good. Uh, I'm good for the duration here. Once again, stick on you. Taylor and they have a mutualistic relationship, those oh, two. Good. Thanks for offering Yeah, I so I don't think it's parasitic. Um, the uh, orphuroid is able to be higher up in the water column. Okay, uh, you can Due go to the, yeah, the coral fan being kind of hanging off that ledge, so it's a beneficial for, for uh, at least the ophiroid. Nice. I'm not too sure about the coral. Uh, I don't think there's any benefit for it. Sorry about that. I had a customer right in the middle of the uh, Zoom. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it looks like this feature is getting just deeper and more dramatic yeah, as yeah. we go. It's really We're Ship definitely where we want to be. Roger on the five meters. Thanks for the update. Yeah, you can keep it moving. If you call in the move now, um, he can punch that in. So once we get the whole show moving on the road, it's better. We'll make a lot better time if we keep those moves. Yes, sir. Yeah. Roger. Keep it continuous. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, Downlight's going back off. Bridge now. Can you continue that move another five zero meters at two hundred two zero zero bearing? Roger, thank you. That's a uh, for for both of you on my left and my right. That's a a good view for me in uh, Atlanta. So that allows me to see the tether. We know that's behaving, and I can also see the I get the. Uh, bird's eye view or the god's eye view of the bathymetry uh, above and below and to the right and left of Hercules. So in this case, importantly, to the right. And um, another thing to keep an eye on, we are getting a little closer. We're right at that 20-meter uh, limit on the uh, Atalanta sonar. And as you can see, there's a kind of a bulge coming. So you kind of want to look out on that. And so if you see the cliff face bulging out or in, we'll adjust our bearing uh, with the vessel a little bit to maintain that 20 meter offset from the cliff. And you can adjust that bearing anytime you want. You don't have to wait for a move to complete. Roger. Would you like me to call in a five or 10 degree? Um, what we'll do to try and avoid that is we'll have uh, I'll have uh, Atlanta come up. So if you come up, uh, you can probably come up five meters to start. And typically the cliff is not going to be totally sure it's going to go away from us a bit. So coming up might get us back in the box. Great. Yeah. Looks like Herc might be looking at this bulge. 
that yeah. we're seeing right now. So basically we can come up over the bulge with Atalanta, hopefully, and Hurt can just continue on. Great. Or Hurt can also come up and... Dan, what's the ideal ship speed for these sorts of moves? Um, point 0.3 knot is uh, kind of our typical ideal speed. You can come up another five there, please. And that's because of the you're so close to the obstacle? No. Um, there's lots of reasons for that. Um, uh, two of the primary reasons are if we go any faster, we get more of an excessive layback with Atalanta. Mm. So if we do want to then stop or look at anything or we get in trouble, um, we still have that layback. So the so say we have a 100 meter layback and we get in trouble. Herc only has, you know, 30 meters on each side of Atalanta. And I always try and keep some in the bank there. Yeah, yeah. So that means Atalanta will, uh, if the ship stops or ship takes off or whatever, um, that means at some point it will drag Hercules, you know, I won't have control of it. So we try and keep the layback minimized. And then if we're gonna change if we're following a feature, for example, that's not well defined in the in the uh, multi-beam, it allows us to change, and it follow. It's a little more predictable, easier to manage. Uh, the other reason too is if you know there's a room full of biologists in here, or even one, it's usually they want to um, uh, be able to stop and get that close-up view to ID. So. If you do the math, we're moving at 10 meters a minute, roughly, and yep. we have an effective, uh, so if I'm 20 meters in front of uh, Atlanta, that means I have two minutes from the time I stop till the time Atlanta is directly over Hercules, and then I have another two minutes by time Atlanta is 20 meters in front of Hercules, and I, we typically, if we want to keep moving, we don't, we can get under, but if we get on the other side, then we have to make up all that time, and then sure enough, we're gonna see this once in a lifetime opportunity. We have to stop and look at this, and we and we can't because Atlanta continues to move on, and we have to move. So it, it just gives us a lot more, it's easier to manage and gives us a lot more control of the two-body system. Thanks. Sometimes our zooms are, you know, quite uh, quick, depending on the scientists, they get the ID, boom, they're happy, we move on. Uh, sometimes the, that two minutes is, we take the full two minutes as we, you know, talk about it, uh, or they discuss what it might be, or um, if we're talking to the to our audience at home, they, you know, may have some questions and that takes some time for that to go back and forth, so. And then also, um, some uh, some poor person, and Jonathan can uh, have some experience here. Somebody is going to have to watch. Somebody will watch all of this video many times over. For example, Steve, one of our very good uh, coral specialists, he's watched hours and hours and hours of ROV video. So if we're moving at that speed, that allows them to identify the uh, what they're seeing and, and uh, do video annotation. So they're counting them and they're putting, for example, that sponge goes into this bucket for, uh, you know, I saw this sponge on this kind of rock at this depth. Uh, Don is if I move past, if I'm going too fast like this, then they can't do that for the sponge. The, the other four or five animals that they're seeing, especially when it starts to get densely uh, populated. And they're doing all that. Uh, it's starting to get, you know, smarter where they're getting um, software and nowadays the AI to do that. But for the most part, uh, they're still doing that manually. So they have to pause the video. Uh, Dan, can we drop down just a little bit and see underneath this uh, little sure. overhang? Sure. Thanks. It's not like me to go by an overhang without looking underneath. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing some different corals here and sponges. 
Dan, I'm going to do a quick DVL reset. All right. Okay. Yeah. I'm typically uh, no green lights here, so Great. all my autos are off. That might be a Pulio Pogon sponge, but I am not sure. Uh, which one is that? I'm hamstrung without my annotate, my uh, telestrator. Well, there's a sweet spot there where we can get the lights underneath the ledge, but. Uh, We're also seeing some a mushroom coral, bottle brush chrysogorgia, stalked crinoid, p potentially some cup corals on the wall there. Where do you see cup corals? Uh, potentially, I can't tell. We would definitely have to zoom um, Top, on right. that wall. Yeah. But, um. And I don't see him. Dan, are you good to keep this move going along the wall? Uh, give me a second. I need to. I need to make some tracks. So I'm to the north of uh, no Atlanta. Worries. There, I'm gonna light the afterburners here. And while I was talking about it, we got 10 meters behind Atlanta. <laughs> Definitely see those formations a little bit more prominent now. Yeah, we're definitely seeing some more angular shapes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful. Pink coming corallium, or just corallid. Okay, uh, yeah, you can, uh, what were we doing, two, one, it looks like it's going away from us a bit there. I'm going to uh, turn Hercules to the south here and uh, oh, wow. see what we got. <clears throat> it seems like quite a drop. I see a cliff. I want to jump off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little kid in me. Okay, you can uh, continue the move. Yeah, that's okay. Roger. Bridge now. Can we do another five zero meter step at bearing two zero zero? Yes. So these columnar basalts are formed as the lava cools. Uh, what would, what's the change you would like to make? He's good to change his heading to whatever. Sorry, repeat. Does that sound okay with you pilots? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Roger, that sounds great. Course. You can uh, you can come down five. So the target we're looking for these columnar basalts are formed as the a very uniformly mixed lava cools, and they're often found in layers, and so there'll be uh, a layer. Uh, down just a bit lava here. that did not cool in the proper way to form these uh, six-sided columnar basalts. And so I think our kind of vertical transects, Dan, up and down might help find that sweet spot with the layer that we're looking for, too. It's so interesting to see the jagged and rigid ones and then to have something that's totally flat, just like the one that we're looking the top at.
So, are we on that layer, or do you want me to drop down some more? The previous record had 1,680 meters as where they had identified a large field of basalt columns oh, in this general, and their dive was along this same track. So I think if we, you know, are, are looking low and looking high, we're... Around it. If you see uh, Atlantis sonar there, it looks like there's two or three steps yep. above us. So Yeah, anyway. my thought was that maybe we, we uh, experience both. And uh, the deeper the deeper notes here have uh, pieces and smaller formations, but the words "large field" are used at that 1,680 meter depth. Right oh, I'll, I'll see if I can come up a bit here. I'll of course have to step the ship that way. I'll just poke my nose up, and see what if it does indeed. Uh, it flattens out there for maybe, you know, five, ten meters, looks like, and then there should be another, uh... Let's see if we want to come up... up five, please. Let's use uh, Atlanta to get a kind of an idea of what's out there behind us, and some yeah, so close I can't see anything. So those are the kind of steps you're seeing in the sonar there. And in theory, there's a one above us here as well. I'm actually right here. Yeah. But, but uh, the Doppler's, there's no beams, because <laughs> uh, just, just so you know. Cliff, yeah. yeah. Would you like to use USB-L tracking for now? No, no, I'm good. Okay. Just letting you know, so you know. Let's move um, 20 meters northeast. North e 20 meters east, sorry. I have to do that northeast, southwest thing every time. Roger. <laughs> we'll just uh, run out and look at that other uh, sonar target out there. I don't quite have the leash to get there. Okay. Yeah. The ship is still finishing yeah, its fine. rotation. Yeah, right there. you can call it in. So. Roger. Bridge, bridge, nav. I'll find something to look at while we're waiting. Um, when your move is finished, or your rotation, can you please move two zero meters at a bearing of zero nine zero? Please repeat. One sure. more time. He said repeat order. Too much information for him. 20090, that's all he needs. <laughs> so here you can see a stalked <laughs> crinoid here. This red organism in the center of the perk screen. Sure, yeah. You can use this one. Doink. Uh, doink, doink, doink. Right. But that window has to be active. So, uh, because of the Bridge language. Now. Apologies. Can you make that move at a bearing of 090? What's that? Thank you. Just click the window anyway. Yeah, should be going. It's that one up there, mate. Here, here, I'll do it. I'll do it. Let me. Uh, 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 gauges are good. If you uh, want a specific number on one, uh, the res is uh, about three psi. And the main's probably uh, also three. We'll call it three. Close to three. Uh, 
motors at five, terms at five. Copy paste. They shouldn't have moved. Uh, too much information for the bridge. The the kind of our our um, our speak our lingo. It would be uh, bridge nav two zero zero nine zero. That's it. Any more, and uh, you'll have a long conversation. Okay. Just the numbers. Yeah, you can put an at in there two zero at zero nine zero, but they uh, say zero. And so instead of saying 20, they'll get the 20. It's uh, more clear. Roger. And precede the uh, 9 with the 090. I like to mess with them uh, and say west <laughs> or east. But yeah. And you don't have to wait for a reply. You can just call and say uh, bridge nav 20090, please. And um, that will allow them to, so they have to walk from the DP station over to their comms and then back and forth uh, so they can uh, confirm the move in one reply. So if they got it, they'll say uh, nav bridge, roger, you know, 20090 or something like that. Dan, can we move off to the right if you got any? Tether, just keep hey. kind of cruising at this stuff until you get. I'm really stretched out there, but I'll give it a go. Yeah. The nav screen is uh, you can rehome that if you want. The oh, yellow. it's not updating. Sorry, I was. No, it is, but I'm the I'm the speck of blue. Oh, thank out you. there, so I'm yeah, 30 yeah, meters right. away. You can tell by the Atlanta screen. Sorry, what do you want to see? No, it's all good. I just just kind of covering more ground, you know. Did anyone see that, if that looked like a Bath of Pathies coral? To no. the left? I th yeah. We don't have to, like, stop if it interferes with our goal, but... Sorry, we're waiting on the ship. Yeah, I think that might be a Bathy Pathies. I think it might be. So that's, I think, our first black coral that we've seen. Well, that's a more accurate representation, Jason, of where we are. So okay, stretched out 30 meters yeah, uh, yeah. directly to the east of Atalanta, and we're trying to go up the cliff. So you see the hard uh, red return there at 40 meters away. Yep. So I, I I need 10 meters, and yeah, we're doing a 20 meter move. Should get us there. Okay. And it could be spectacular. It could be mud. <laughs> What's that? Res percent. You get that off of the graphical user interface and it happens to be 50. And if we put Atalanta over like the middle of the steps here, then I can uh, run up and down a little bit more as, and cover some serious ground. But just from the looks of what we're seeing in Atalanta, this is going to be more interesting and maybe more dramatic than the, uh, but I don't know if it's the layer you want. Can you come up five for me, please? Ship move is complete. Roger. Uh, let's continue our two um, two zero zero move. Roger. Uh, let's do one to the south. Just do fifty south. Oh, uh, one eight zero. Yes. Roger. Sorry, five zero one eight zero. Roger. Bridge nav. Five zero meters at one eight zero, please. Great, thank you.
So hopefully it will swing to about here. And it'll give me a little more leash. I'm still tight. I'm going to just uh, pop up here and uh, see if it flattens out. So I think it does. Can you come up 10 meters, please? Yeah, looks like it does. All right. Look at that dust storm I just did. Uh, ran away from that. That dust storm will be there for two years. is going to switch out for a lunch break. Roger. Hey, for this, for uh, our watch section, uh, before you peel off for lunch, uh, good job. Good, good job. Johan, good work on NAV. Really, really good work. Devin? Yeah. Way to Thank keep you. us connected Thank with the you. crew at home. Um, much appreciated. Dan, it was great having you sit in with us. Oh, my pleasure. Come on. Thank you for your patience. Good work on at Atlanta. There we go. Definitely see those formations yeah, standing right out now. Good Does that qualify? I think so. Yeah, that's the general shape. Let's see if we can we pull back down a little bit and just see if that if we can associate it with some sort of start and stop vertically. Sure, you get a good uh, overview there in Atlanta. I can uh, move Atlanta oh, yeah. a little closer, but so they did describe the these sort of little outcrops, and maybe that that uh, this is something. Yeah, it's just a hint that we're in the right neck of the woods. Yeah, Dave's in video for lunchtime break. Continue on uh, south fish. Yeah, yeah. Roger that. Yep. Anyone have an estimate of what they think the dimensions of one of those would be? One of those columns? Uh, Dan's got the calibrated eyeball, but no laser. We're uh yeah, you can get a idea if you look in Atalanta. I would say yeah, maybe one, one meter, one to two meters. Yeah. I don't know how calibrated my eyeball is. I constantly get <laughs> surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so typically hexagonal six-sided but depending on the precise conditions and how um, uniformly mixed the lava was five to seven sides um, I'm looking for a kind of range of dimensions So 1.1 meters in diameter, but up to 18 meters long, I'm seeing.
Yeah, we're close. This is good. Yeah, if you're interested in learning how these formed, head on over to our Nautilus website. There's a hyperlink there in the in the update box. Get you nice. some information on that. I'm interested in how they were formed. I have no clue. It was a volcano? Yeah, so it's uh, <laughs> lava cooling. And it, it looks like they cool uniformly. And mm -hmm. so with a center point, uh, these faces at 120 degrees uh, cool and shrink. And it, it's like the uh, Dr. Bell I mentioned last night. Like you see sometimes this uniform pattern of cracking on the mud, on mud. Right. Um, but very, very similar as the lava cools. And then there's some that aren't uh, in a vertical orientation. They're Good for canted another off move, to one side or other. And they're... Looks one like eight zero, two zero zero. Uh, let's step a little two. closer. Let's try a, uh, 20 meters, 135. Roger. To a more irregular cooling, so... Bridge, nav, two zero meters at 135, please. Two zero meters at one three five, please. Thank you. I should uh, bring Atalanta a little closer so we can uh, let me get have a little more fun on the cliff there. Mm -hmm. Downlight's coming on. These guys are really cool. They get huge bamboo coral. It's a, a very general term there. Isn't it? Yeah, And down lights off. Thanks, sir. That's a good question. We got going on on uh, Mini Zeus focus action there, Dave. Uh, someone decided to put it in auto focus and auto iris, which is uh, not what we usually run. Oh, uh, you're good. It's a nice view of her. You can actually uh, bring your head to the left a little for me. We're trying to get the uh, shots in the background, so and uh, the current's kind of 
Uh, bonus is taking everything off to the left side there. So. I'm going to run away here in a second. Just Ship move is about complete. Roger that. I'm oh. still catching up. I think south again? What do you think? Yeah, that sounds good. Sure. I like the closer now in uh, Atlanta can, you know, be on the top of the... Uh, up the step, so... Yeah. If you actually... Uh, why don't you come up five and see what happens. Let's just peek over the top. So I'm going to use your sonar to look over the top of the feature here and uh, see if there's another one up above it. Do you want to hold off on that no, step? No, you can keep going. Roger. Bridge nav five zero meters at... So, see now you've come up above the above the feature, and Atalanta can now see out 100 meters away, and there's nothing nothing out there but flat. So we're at the top of those series of steps, and so we can get as close as we want. And you know you can then be above the cliff uh, to be out of the danger danger zone. So. Um, Tighter here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna keep continue to mosey to the south. So I'm basically right under you now, and this will let us uh, kind of I can uh, if we're just off the cliff, I can run up and down and left and right a little easier. And we can. It gives us a nice overview of the train. You can look to your right just a little for me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna slide to the south of you. Beautiful. Perfect. I have a great question uh, about the formation of these rocks and why they ended up in a cubed shape. Yeah, uh, you know, they're not often cubed. Uh, that's, uh, that's unusual. They're most often hexagonal or six-sided too, or, um, or hexagonal or pentagonal, five or six-sided. Um, and I think the reason they, they end up that shape is uh, it somehow in nature is the least stress field when the things cool. So if you see mud cracks often, that when they dry, you'll, you'll often see this kind of hexagonal or pentagonal pattern of those. And I think as they start cooling, they, they uh, shrink, things cool and shrink, mm -hmm. and they uh, start at the surface and that crack propagate, propagates down. Right. And somehow this, uh, this columnar, this hexagonal or pentagonal uh, um, orientation is uh, the way to relieve the stress the most from those cracks. And so we see these all, lots of places in the world where you have a large uh, basaltic, you see those, th that they're not, they're not really uh, square, that they're, those, right. those ones there are one, two, uh, hexagonal, two, three, nope, four, pentagonal, five, that one's good. pentagonal. But Dan, you know that uh, the the primary sighting of them from the previous dive was about 16, 1,680 meters. 
And so I don't know if we're, as we move south, we're going to work our way up to, you think, a little? Hopefully. Uh, we just had a kind of a peak above uh, uh, this feature there mm -hmm. with Atalanta, and uh, it was all flat, 100 meters out. Mm -hmm. So okay. there's a couple steps kind of below us, if you will. Right. Uh, yeah. And sometimes these things do come in layers. You'll have a you know beautiful layer of columns and then a layer of kind of messed up areas and things yeah, like that. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what we saw. So we stepped uh, to the west a little bit just to get, you know, because we could see the steps in uh, Atlanta at one point. And, uh, yeah, we've moved... Uh, uh, close to the what is the top step for us now, knowing that the uh, ideal target depth is in the 1600 meter, 100 meters above us basically. So I was hoping to see uh, another step in Atlanta, but uh, have not as of yet. But it looks like, yeah, it's coming up a little as we go to the south here. Okay, we're at 1788 now, is that? Yeah, something like that. We're going through a, a watch change here now. We have lots of people sitting down and some yes. people getting up and going to get lunch. Yes, and I want to thank everybody for participating and following along with us. Um, my name is Devin and I'm going to sign off for my shift. Alejandro, Alejandra, Ali is on her way to join you and special guest Lomo. Special guest Lomo will be here. Uh, just as a reminder, you are always welcome to go over to Nautilus Live, check things out, keep us on your favorites tab, keep up with us what's going on, and I will see you on my next shift, 8 to 12 tonight. See that rock sitting there? Yeah. That rock is saying, pick me up. Yeah. Pick me up. <laughs> well. Like, how far could it have fallen? Well, could have just fallen right from the little crevice above. So. Looks uh, a little lonely up there. Don't you want that rock? No, I think we want to try to get over to the right spot <laughs> as a priority. I can get that rock while the ship in Atalanta are moving, thus losing zero time. And we call it rock sampling on the fly, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like somebody just needs a challenge over there. That's how we roll. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm we not can't. Gonna, we I'm can't. not gonna rise to that challenge. We can't. <laughs> we can't stop the ship for, uh, you know, just to pick up a rock. We gotta keep moving. We got places to go. Things hey, to see. How uh, how high do you estimate from the from the sediment we see there to the top of the column there. What do, you, what do you think that height is? Currently, Hercules is pinging in that sediment at eight meters. Eight meters, okay. Yeah, and I'm uh, I'm probably pretty close to, you know, to the top, the top of it here. Yeah, yeah. So I am, of course, looking down, so if I look up mm -hmm. with Herc's camera. So dun, we're looking dun, about dun, 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 dun. 30 feet, 25, 30 feet, something like that, before we get so, to this yeah, plateau. There, there you are, right there. There's yeah. the, top of Herc, so, yeah, that's, uh, call it 10 meters plus Herc's uh, yep. 2 meters, yep. so 12 meters. Yeah, so they're still, still pretty impressive. I need to I need to get on with it here. I'm getting yep. run over by Atalanta, as I said. Atalanta and the ship never stop. Keep moving uh, south if you want, Chris. Bridge, bridge, Nav. 
Hello. You snuck in. Hey, good afternoon, Oriel. Uh, can we get uh, 50 meters uh, due south? <clears throat> and we've looked up enough to know what's above us. Yeah, we can. Uh, if you <clears throat> want to uh, come up, come up five on uh, Atlanta real quick, and we'll just take another sonar sweep up there. Yeah, we've been, we've been doing point three the whole time. <clears throat> point three are normal ten meters a minute. Thousand meters to go. Larry hasn't done it yet, but I know he wants to. Dad, how far to the next waypoint? Yeah, well, I, I was listening, <laughs> so. Uh, I'm I'm trying to uh, bring out all the patience I have. <laughs> it's hard to do. And last time I checked, it was 1,100 meters when we started this. Mm -hmm. uh, Downlight's coming on. Hey, Taylor, you to tell us what it is. Yeah, that is a bamboo coral there with a purple uh, fly trap anemone. Whoa. <coughs> Those are two separate things. Uh, yeah. Fly trap anemone, and I, you kinda, I can, it looks very much like a fly trap. And yeah. It, is, the, is the anemone actually living on the coral, or is it yeah, uh, not, not really? It's perched on top because it uh, is a benefit to be higher up in the water column mm -hmm. for it to feed. And is there any kind of symbiotic relationship? Does it do a, have any benefit to the coral? Field? I don't believe so. No, I think it's, so it's just, just kind of benefiting the an enemy. Yeah. So, but it's also not hurting the the coral. I'm getting a little close here and busting yeah. it up. I'm gonna back off and run away. So uh, we picked that Atlanta up 10 meters just to look above the cliff, and mm -hmm. yeah, you don't see anything except that uh, current feature we're following to the south, and it looks like it hooks uh, it hooks around a little bit. So yeah. we may have to adjust our course more uh, 200-ish on the next move there, Chris. 200-ish. Well, you see Atlanta's sonar; it's kind of <coughs> curving off to the right. Okay, so yeah, you want to start. Right. We want to follow the feature and keep gotcha. Atlanta either over the top of the ridge or yep. offset 10 gotcha. meters or so. Yeah, gotcha. So you're done climbing. So you're done climbing is what you're telling me. Uh, for now, there's nothing up there to look at okay. except mud. Our target uh, Nirvana depth is 1,600 and change. Six, I think I heard 1,680 or 1680, something. 1,600. 100 yeah. meters above us. So we're, we're hoping to pick up some... Atlanta sonar targets or Herc sonar targets above us at some point. Are you in autos? Okay. <clears throat> we are uh, start now. We're going to start going along the that cliff. So we're going to start going at uh, two zero zero, something like that. So yonder, yonder way.
No, no columnars. Bridge nav, uh, uh, three zero meters, uh, two uh, zero zero. Yep. Okay, we're still going through a <laughs> frenzy of watch change here, letting people settle in. And as soon as uh, those folks going to get lunch get out, we'll, we'll take a round and have some introductions and some explanations of, of what's going on here. All right, I'll lay well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. I mean, it's not ideal, but we get some, but none of this is ideal for... But actually, the nav has been good. The waves are small, so we're not getting a lot of heavy stuff in the, in the data, so it's going pretty well. Let me put it full screen again for you there. Hi guys, this is Ale, and we are starting off with our 12 to 4 watch. Uh, what we're currently doing right now is we are looking for columnar basalt. 
And so that's uh, igneous rock that has broken in a certain pattern, a hexagonal pattern. It has to do with the cooling. Um, and so we're just gonna wait a little while before we go around and introduce everyone. Still doing that handoff from the 8 to 12 watch to the 12 to 4, but I will say we have a lot of geologists on board right now. So I feel like this is going to be a really exciting next couple of hours. <laughs> yes. We, we, we certainly hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rocks are always exciting. <laughs> Rocks are exciting. So, Ollie, we're also um, testing some new technology equipment aboard EV Nautilus, right? Can you yes. tell us a little bit more about what exactly we're looking at? Yeah, we are testing out a new camera system that we lovingly call Cy a Triclops. It's got three cameras, and what we're going to be doing is we're taking that footage, Copy that. and overnight we are processing it to kind of render this environment, this like virtual reality, 3D environment. Um, and so that's kind of what we're doing here. We're in this spot looking for these cool rocks, and we're going to basically kind of map them so that everyone can feel like they can explore the deep sea. Yeah, maybe we should we should uh, offer a little background that these were discovered way back in 1996 uh, by uh, called Hurl, I think it was Hawaii Embassy Research Lab, uh, and they were diving in a submersible, Pisces, mm -hmm. um, and as they were cruising along, we're just uh, we're on the north side of the south. We're on the north side of yep. uh, Molokai, uh, and uh, the the Hawaiian Islands are all volcanic islands, so. They were the result of lots of volcanic activity. And uh, as they were diving, they started off at about 1,900 meters. And when they came up to about 16, 1,700 meters, uh, they found this amazing uh, formation of what we call columnar basalts, as you described. And, uh, and you properly said they, this kind of interesting formation is the result of uh, cooling, a cooling process, that as the lava comes in molten and everything, it starts to cool. And if it has enough time to cool, uh, slowly, uh, it'll start uh, shrinking. As things cool, they shrink, and it starts cracking at the surface. And in nature, this pattern, which we're just seeing now in, in a beautiful way, um, often creates these hexagonal or pentagonal five-sided or six-sided uh, forms, because somehow that's the least stress role. And this is, this is beautiful, because here's this combination. You see them both. Uh, straight in some areas and, and curved in others. And uh, th those have two different names. When they're straight up and down, they're called colonnade. And uh, when they're curved like that, they're called intablative, which is an amazing name. I, I don't know where that came from, but it sounds very fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Wow, that is incredible, isn't it? What a wild seascape. Larry, will you introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Larry Mayer, and uh, I'm serving as the watch leader for this watch. The what time is it now? The 12 to the 12 to 4 watch. Um, and I come from the University of New Hampshire, where I direct uh, something called the Center for Coastal and Ocean Mapping. Do you want to uh, just move move around and have? Yeah. Alex. So uh, I'm Jonathan Feely. I'm sitting on the back row here. Um, <laughs> I am our uh, media producer for the Ocean Exploration Trust and uh, have been the technical lead for the wide field camera array that we're currently testing. Three beautiful cameras on the front of ROV Hercules. And for this uh, dive, we have our configuration is for photogrammetry of these incredible features. Yeah, what's up, Jonathan? Um, and hey, everyone, my name is Madison Dapsevich. I'm back here in the gray sweatshirt. <laughs> Uh, I am a communications lead here on board EV Nautilus, and I'm a science journalist when I'm back home ashore. Um, and my job here is to help facilitate the story of Nautilus. So um, working with our SCFs, Ale, Devin, and Daniela, who you all have heard from already, and also really making sure that all of the important work that we're doing and the science that we're conducting is being appropriately and, and um, you know, accurately reflected to you all. Yep, yep. And you... Yeah, my uh, friend. <laughs> so, I, like I said earlier, I'm Alejandra Martinez. I'm from Eagle Pass, Texas. I teach seventh grade science uh, down there, and I'm a science communication fellow here. So it's my job to help everybody um, kind of understand what's going on as we're doing dives and uh, 
you know, uh, get questions put out to the people here in the van uh, that you can type in online. So go ahead and uh, ask us questions if you have any questions. Uh, video, you want to introduce yourselves? Yeah, for sure. Um, hello, hello. Uh, my name is Manel Morangi. I am the uh, video engineering intern, and I'll be on the uh, 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. watch. Um, I work at a Maryland Sea Grant out in Maryland, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> and I'll... <laughs> gotcha. One more. Rai, you want to introduce yourself? How's that? It's Raya on SPL. Uh, maybe. <laughs> why, why don't we come back to Taylor here? Yeah, I think they might be doing some yeah, training yeah, up there. They're, they're, yeah, they're, they're concentrating. Uh -huh. We don't want to interrupt that level of concentration. So Taylor Ann, why don't you? Yeah, hi everyone. I'm Taylor Ann. I'm sitting in the data logger seat. You probably can't see me on the live stream. I have a lot of computer screens over here. Um, but. I am a data logger. I am taking all observations of what we are seeing here on this dive and also uh, notating all of the setting changes and lighting changes that we're using for Triclops so that we can keep a good record of what works the best uh, when we're trying to create these these models and uh, 3D models. So yeah, I've been working with OET as a contractor since 2019 and I really enjoy being out here. This is going to be a great expedition. So. Uh, welcome, watch team. This is our first watch together. Yeah, this is. It's very exciting. And look at that. Well, what can we ask for more? We'll finally find what we're looking imagery for. than what we're, than yeah. we're seeing out in front of us. This really is something. Very so spectacular. People may have heard of these kinds of columnar basalts. There's a very famous one uh, called the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland. And uh, if anybody ever watched uh, Close Encounters, there was the. Uh, Yep, the the, <laughs> the Devil's Tower, that, that thing that they were all drawn to, that's a, a columnar basalt, much like this. Um, oh, there's a, another one in uh, in Scotland that's uh, Finn something. I forgot exactly what it's called, but there's a th th there's a great story um, that has to do with uh, it's a legend about Irish giants and how these things were were caused. And there was a Irish giant called Finn McCool. <laughs> and uh, he uh, really uh, didn't like the uh, Scottish uh, counterpart, uh, whose name was Finn Gall. And uh, so it, it, the, the, what the legend says is that he, one by one, implanted these columns to create a causeway that would go from Ireland all the way to Scotland, because his, uh, his opponent was, uh, Finn Gall was Scottish, and he one by one built these and, and, and established this big big causeway and um, got tired just as he finished and walked all the way back and took a nap. <laughs> as we all do. And, and, and Finn Gall, <laughs> the Scottish giant, he uh, saw this causeway and he said, I'll go use this to get to Finn McCool, McCool, and he walked all the way over there and um, when he got there Finn McCool was sleeping but his wife seeing Finn Gall come to attack him said oh no that's that's not Finn McCool that's our baby Aww. asleep <laughs> yeah <laughs> and Finn Gall seeing this baby that was so large his size as a giant said if that's the baby the dad must be, <laughs> so I'll never be able to beat him in a, in a battle. And so Fingal walked all the way back, but destroying the causeway as he walked back to Scotland, leaving only the Giant's Causeway in Ireland and the other big outcrop that's now called Finn something or other. Uh, I'll have to remember what that name is in a minute, um, which is right on the water. Um, in Scotland. So we have these two these outcrops in Ireland and one in, uh, in Northern Ireland and one in Scotland. And according to legend, they were once connected as a giant causeway. So Larry, in addition to be a, being a scientist, you're also a storyteller. Oh, no. And a historian <laughs> and a mythologist. <laughs> have you updated your resume lately? <laughs> 
Did and did I hear you say that? Okay, so uh, ROV, can I get a status update on what what we're doing here? So it, the the place in Scotland is called Fingal's Fingal's Cove. So we've come up, obviously, off, off, off the bottom. Okay, come down another 10 for me and look up a little bit. So here we can see these same sort of columnar basalts, but now partially buried with sediment. So we're probably at the base then. Uh, I'm sorry, Maddie. A bit more. Were, you, were you asking something? That's good for now. Thank you. Uh, oh, I was asking you something. <laughs> <laughs> I, it took uh, me a minute sorry, to what, come back to What that. was that, Jonathan? Oh, I was just asking for a status update on, on okay, what, you're not, what our movement is. You're not on is. SPL. <laughs> I'm I on can't SPL. hear you now. <laughs> Can you hear me? Uh, the sounds are all wonky, so for some people, they're super quiet. For some people, they're just uh, super loud. I'm not sure what's going on there. Yeah, well, I can barely hear you. Maybe you put the mic your, closer uh, to your... Yeah, so, yeah. well, I think you got it as close as you can. Like, lots of times I see that's the difference. It's just how close people have the microphone to their mouth. Yeah. Um, well, we always do this at Watch Change, so one of the things we uh, often do at introductions is give a video opportunity to set the sound levels because everybody's different. Some people are loud, some people are quiet. Status is uh, we're trying to follow the wall to the south here. The wall's hooking around a bit. And uh, we've just gone through watch change, which is uh, to get everyone on the same page again. Roger. Okay, that beautiful car is the same thing. What, what How's is my it? level? Is my level yeah, sound so a little bit better there? Yeah, that's an I-4 type I bamboo I can still coral. barely hear you. Um, they're still... Hey Dave, uh, could I get some assistance back here on my levels? Let's uh, do south again, Chris. It's, oh. it's peak. Yeah, change the bearing to the south. That's or see the walls going away from her. So she's looking one three five right now. If you don't count the built-in 20 to 30 degree offset. Try now. Nope. Try now. Yes. Did that help? I have no idea. It's just blast. Ask him, ask him if they help. Hello. Dan, how's that? Uh, that's better. I can hear you in the back of the room more than I can hear you on. Yeah, I know. Uh, you want to look to your left just a little for me? A couple clicks to the uh, minus 10. So it looks like the wall is uh, kind of, you know, fizzled out here. Um, we have a sonar target. I see something. Yeah, that's off uh, Atlantis now looking uh, <coughs> east-southeast, so uh, we're moving uh, to the south. Can, can we scootle over to, towards that target? Yeah, it's quite a uh, quite a strong quite a strong target coming in. So. Uh, not really, but it's kind of the wall continuing. So the wall's more to our yeah. east. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that, Chris. Let's move uh, 20 meters or 30 meters east. Yeah. Uh, you can bring it, bring your head to the east for us. <coughs> so 
also that'll uh, by you looking east, that'll kind of spur up the uh, wall a little bit for us that we've been following, mm -hmm. and it'll help out. us uh, figure out where we need to be to see something besides mud. Mm -hmm. At least it'll help me figure that out. Chris probably already has it worked out. <laughs> So since we're just starting our watch, if you guys have any questions, remember we've got that box While we're um, waiting, I'm gonna underneath drop the quad. If you here, so. scroll down a little bit, you can uh, type in a question there. Or if you're watching on YouTube, go to nautiluslive.org. And uh, we have a, a box there for any messages or questions that you want to send us about these really beautiful looking rocks. Look at that. I have a question for you. Yeah. OK, so this is your second time uh, aboard Nautilus. Yes. But your first time was 10 years ago. Is that right? Yes. Okay. You can look down a little yeah. right as I come Crazy. Up underneath So what there. have you seen that's changed in the 10 years since you've been on ship? Um, we'll see if it's there's a, a lot more high tech. You that I can follow for a while. Um, it's easier to switch over, like SPL and everything. Um, the controls are a lot easier. Um, I just, I, I just love the environment here at OET, Ocean Exploration Trust. It's just, it's a very like teaching environment, and that's what I'm passionate about. And so everywhere you look there's people teaching other people things and um we're able to bring this to a wider audience back when i was here uh last Bridgman, we Nevs. just did um three zero um, meters interactions zero four five museums and things and now we're able to do them in classrooms all over the world so we're reaching a way bigger audience that's exciting yeah i saw a comment come in um on the last watch somebody was like Hey, have you all known each other for a while, or are you just getting to know each other? And it's it's really cool. This is such a unique experience. Yeah. I think we all just kind of vibe really well right yeah, off the bat. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> uh, Everybody's so nice. If you look so straight nice down with your camera right now, I'm right underneath you, 30 meters straight underneath you. Larry, I'm looking over your shoulder, and I see that you have some handwritten notes in front of you, it looks like. Oh, uh, these... Is that, is that how things used to be done? Yeah, th 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 <laughs> this is actually so the, the like no wonder you, you pilot of the Pisces report yeah, from 1996. 20 and to 30 it's meters a, a very brief but nice description of uh, how they started their dive and what they found where. And so that's what we're trying to recreate now with these new high resolution cameras to oh, get to that point. Now we have to understand that in 1996, navigation was not what it is now. Now we can navigate much, much more precisely the position of the ship. It's always difficult say the target to, the to right determine there, the position of a submarine. To the right, gotcha. Um, go here. You can't get GPS yep. positions be, uh, down there. I'll get you. So that's an estimate thing. So, so even yep. though we have a position yeah, where I'm they just found it, I'm we kind can't of arresting right this southerly swing. And certainly we have to yeah. go and explore. It, and you, got, you were dangling behind a bit. Yeah, and we're clearly in the vicinity. We're seeing, we're seeing all these lovely columnar basalts. But I'm we're looking for the, the mother load. So to speak. <laughs> Let's find it. We were talking about that in the lounge earlier about how, like, the last person to we look at these shallower, no formations is just meters. that one person and writing those zero nine zero. notes, and now we can bring it to the, the whole uh, world. Mm -hmm. And they can see the, these yep. super cool rocks. Seems to drop off. Roger. Thank you, Bridge. And hopefully, with the perfection of this these camera systems, not will not only will, will it be brought to the world, but it'll be you know truly immersive experience where, where people really could feel like they're they're sitting there with us. They're pausing for a second for a heading change. Roger. Yeah, okay, so Jonathan, what exactly are these camera systems that we're working with? I've been I've been hearing them compared to like video games or something along those <laughs> lines. <laughs> That's a horrible, horrible comparison. It's like, nothing like a video game. <laughs> nothing like a video game. It's not like he's just up there controlling this with a computer game. Yeah, pad. Right. yeah. <laughs> Don't they call that a joystick? <laughs> But the, is, that, is the software that w was developed for video games, wasn't it that this stuff is being processed through? Yeah, so this, this, this camera system will do two different things. One is uh, it's just a great camera. It's a great cinema okay, camera, right. um, and it's three of them. And those three cameras are meant to record um, all together at once, and it provides that kind of big dome um, view of the world. It's truly immersive. 
experience such that if we uh, develop a VR or AR experience or in museums now they have this full room projection, those kind of technologies where you can, can walk uh, in and be surrounded I, I'm gonna run out by, to the in end this of case, the, the deep now. ocean. That's what these cameras were built for. Um, and then on the other side with that same data that we're recording, which is just really beautiful, beautiful video, um, we can create uh, 3D models of what we're <laughs> seeing. and. In Hercules's view right now can, on uh, SatFeed One, you can see your, those uh, two cameras right little two, one, just kind of poking out. Uh, they're on and, uh, they're on the porch of the ROV now, meters. and each one of those two cameras has a 180 degree fisheye lens on the inside of it. So they're viewing the entire image circle around and in front and to the side of Hercules. The other thing you'll note is that if they're 180 degree fisheyes, there's a lot of overlap between the two. Beautiful. So Thank as you. we approach a rock like we're currently doing, we're able to record not just what's in front of us, but as we pass over the rock, I'm peeking to the what's on the right of the rock and what's on the left of the rock. So in a single pass, I can get a lot of data about the 3D geometry of that that we then run through a, a, a computer program that was developed for the video gaming industry to create 3D models of real objects, um, and it can do it in near real time. It, it processes these kind of files extremely fast, and that's ultimately what we we, we hope to achieve um, with these data: is to show and apply these uh, video game um, tools to what we're doing right now to create immersive experiences where we we absolutely could create a a flyable hercules that you can fly through the Bridge very nav, images three zero that meters, we're one three five. right now truly a, a video game but also so much more because um you know as we are we're, we're nautilus live we're, we're here on the ground we're not making things up i want to bring a true to life video game to to the rest of the world to see what we've seen and be a part of it there is a uh uh, on Steam, there is a uh, ROV simulation, several of them, but there's one that was uh, developed uh, with the help of the Schmidt Ocean Institute. Sub, sub, sub ROV, right? Yeah. Something like that? Yeah. It's awesome. Everyone should check that out. It's a very cool way to experience the world for sure. And that's, that is what we want to okay, do can, uh, come up with the addition that um, come up five. we're aiming to use real models collected on real yeah. real dives. Okay, and we get to wear a headset, right? How do like you a true, yeah, All yeah. In. yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and for our viewers out there, there's lots of stuff on the Nautilus Live website. If you uh, look at some educator resources and things, you can actually go through the ship um, and do like a virtual tour of the ship. You can look at past footage of uh, whale falls and stuff, because um, there's some uh, 3D rendering kinds of, the, of those that you can explore and click on things and, and learn about it and stuff. Really cool. And, and I think right now you have to wear a headset to experience that kind of virtual reality mm -hmm. environment or a 3D environment, but there's certainly right. on and off ventures into true 3D monitors. And oh, yeah. We're just not there yet. Not quite. But, but one of these days, we should be able to do this without having to put a headset on, which I think will be opening it up to even more people. Yeah. I, I'm personally a big believer, especially since having kids, that um, although headsets are, are totally one path for, for a future, for us to kind of experience this kind of immersive imagery, I, I firmly believe still in the museum experience and in the shared connection of a museum experience or, or an immersive experience in a spot where you can stand with other people. Um, and, that, and that's what this camera system is built, that the specifications required to present on a massive IMAX Omnimax dome that's what these cameras, that it meets the specifications, it meets the quality standards to really make that a truly compelling image to, to share with the world and share with multiple people in one space. Right, that's a cool perspective. You know, we're not just necessarily replacing humans or the, t the work that we do, but we're creating these technologies that supplement how we do the work and allow us to get to 
you know, different places and experience those worlds <coughs> in different ways. Yep. Well, it, it brings the experience of so many, so many more people, and I think that's the key. We, we've been very privileged to be able to come out here and you do this. Come and, up, uh, and come up ten. it's wonderful to be able to share that with, with others, and, and that's part of what the Trust has been about for the longest time, but now we're, we're living at the edge of new technologies to share it in even more realistic yeah. ways. Absolutely. It's very cool. I just hope to inspire, right? Mm -hmm. I, I still remember the first time I saw a big wow moment, and it was at an IMAX theater at the Smithsonian. It was the first flight experience. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a big, just an IMAX mm -hmm. movie, and I still remember being seven or eight or whenever I was there with my family and just realizing that that was amazing, you know, that birds did what they did. Bridge and nav, five zero meters, one three five. Uh, it's where I find a lot of honor in applying new technologies like this to that, have that wow that, moment uh, somewhere the out there, a kid Waypoint that two. is opening this or going into a museum um, and seeing this experience and realizing that the deep sea is, is there. We're doing okay. We're kind of and climbing we're the contours. It. Okay. Yeah, we are so yeah, we are we'll are probably end up, up going up bit. this and then climb the contours thusly or maybe track that ridge or something. Yeah. So we're crossing over uh, the valley there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yes. if you want, we can head no, straight there, but... No, let's get it over with, cross over the valley, and then climb. Right. Okay, so you're just going to make a beeline to Waypoint 2, then? No, we're going to cross uh, We're going to cross the mud valley here, and then hopefully we'll get some targets on the other side as we come up the hill. Is that right, Chris? Yeah. 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 For every hill, there is a valley. Yeah. <laughs> Starting to see a little like color. Like I said, a storyteller. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little color. Well, there was a giant future. once. <laughs> Add poet to the list. <laughs> yeah. What's that little thing? Just a nothing in the sand? No. Mm -hmm. I'm a bit paranoid about getting close because I don't want to get mud in my eye. So that's another another target coming in there on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what we want. Some yeah. color. There we go. Yellow's interesting. Red is like very cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I guess the folks on the internet can't see the two sector scanning sonars, but they're really probably one of the key tools for navigation. The sonars looking out far ahead um, can see where there are walls, things like that. They're, they're there for safety, but they also help us uh, look for targets that we're interested in. So right now on the Atalanta's uh, sector scanner, we're seeing a very strong target coming in, indicating a, a wall. Something to aim for, to go towards. And Dan, what are the, what, are those 20 meter range rings on there? Correct, yeah, our, our, our typical operation mode is uh, we can look out 100 meters with Atalanta, which is 20 meter divisions on the uh, sonar, and Hercules is usually looking out 50 meters, which makes that 10 meter divisions. And um, the third scanning sonar that we have in, in, uh, between uh, Rye and myself is uh, looking out uh, 10 meters at the moment. We changed that one a bit, but it's... Um, so that's the real, uh, real close in yeah, that helps us to Let's you do know, your fine, your the fine one or, tuning. Yeah. One or two meters away yeah. from the wall, kind of thing. Uh, you can come up. Come and up and the reason we have to have all this sonar stuff, of course, is because light doesn't transmit very well. Uh, to the frustration of Jonathan and <laughs> other people who like to do optical imagery. And that's why we have uh, Chris in the front, too, putting his multi beam sonar on, on Hercules, also. Which, uh, Chris, what kind of range are we getting at the uh, Norbit? Uh, right now, I have it set to about 30 meters, okay. uh, but we can look out as far as 200 with that sonar. Yeah, so that sonar is looking down and off to the sides, and the sector scanners are, are really looking ahead. Bring your head to the left just a little bit for match my heading, or put me in the middle of the box, however that's going to 
I did say in a comment that came in that's and asking can, if it's uh, twin motion that I'm using for bit, creating the on. the uh, experiences. And I'm not quite using twin motion right now. We're going to be applying reality capture, which was just actually I'm acquired by Epic the wall Games. On the left there, and um, the we're thing. actually using Unreal Engine instead of just going straight to twin motion for what we're doing for some of these simulations. One of the most exciting technologies that will apply with these models is an uh, online open source uh, georeferencing platform for 3D models called Cesium Ion. And what that allows us to do is actually upload a model into the Cesium cloud, quote unquote. Um, and that model is delivered in true geospatial space in Unreal Engine. In other words, uh, the location of the model is, is accurate to where the model exists on the globe, where we imaged it. Um, so using that plugin into Unreal Engine should allow us to actually um, get to the point eventually when, uh, ooh, shrimp. You can uh, look, get to look the point to eventually the for a of, or to the um, east for a minute. Being for able me? to deliver these models in near real time into an environment. I'd say uh, Maybe we go east on the next one, Chris. Roger. So close, yet so far. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It's getting us shallower, too. That's where we want to be. can give her a few more clicks to the left there if you want, right? Or put me in the middle of your box there. Or put me in the middle of my box. Depending on our operational mode, I'm supposed to stay in that box so you don't have to do all that wonkiness. But Bridge nav, let's do three zero meters, zero nine zero. Um, so I have another question. Um, so did this new camera tech require any change to the Hercules uh, transmission com capability? Oh, yeah. Good perceptive viewers here. No kidding. Um, right now, so uh, Hercules has internet, first of all. It's connected to the network and um, on here on the ship, and, and that's how we're... Fire communicating with a lot of the instrumentation on ROV itself. And that includes um, the Norbit multi-beam sonar. So we're sharing a fairly limited bandwidth um, because it is an ROV in the bottom of the sea, um, seven kilometers worth of, of cable that we're communicating through. So we're limited to uh, 1G ethernet uh, speed uh, at the moment, and we are limited on the bandwidth but this kind of testing of camera systems, this is uh, 4K streams coming off of it. Um, it's using uh, Ethernet-based and Internet-based uh, uh, protocol to actually there, transmit please, Chris. it. Yep. Um, it's Bridge helping inform position. what upgrades we'll need to make to Hercules to support this type of equipment into the future. So we're actually making a lot of compromises right now in, in how we're viewing the data off of these three advanced cameras. I mean, these are three 6K cameras, they're not even 4K. They have a tremendous capacity to uh, come up. record data. Um, but again, in term, terms of shaking down this technology and asking ourselves how we can apply it in the future, that's, that's the important part is this is telling us what upgrades we will need to make to Hercules to, to support in, in a sustainable fashion in the future. <laughs> what do you think, Dan? Do you want to get fiber internet all the way down to Hercules? I do. <laughs> Somebody commented that it sounds like a sci-fi film and Dan's the star. <laughs> yeah, come up a little faster. Uh, it's yeah. <laughs> I might have got a little close there, Chris. Do you want me to go back a bit? Yeah. Bridge nav, uh, two zero meters, two seven zero. Oh. Come up a little faster. I want you to just keep coming up until that red goes away in your sonar. Oh. See where the top is. We nope. should stop swinging just here keep, very shortly. Keep coming up. I want to 
to see the top and uh, make sure we can get out of trouble if we have to. Yes, you can see the top from Atlanta. Um, someone's asking about our shrimp count. Definitely someone's uh, job to go back and count those types of things, but I don't have a count. <laughs> so uh, there are people that will go back and count certain species uh, of interest. Um, but yeah, right now I will notate which ones when we see them, but I don't have uh, a count that I'm keeping tallies of specific species. I okay, think that is a perceptive now, viewer that realized the yeah. previous science all right, uh, you, you want me to stop the ship move? You ready? Ago, yep, literally you had a shrimp shrimp tally. Uh, Bridge nav, hold position. Fun. Maybe we'll get there. Yeah, sounds like fun. Look at that we did have a tally of, of Dumbo Atlanta. octopuses that we saw huh. in our last we'll expedition. That That's I, yeah. beautiful. I think your northern yeah. is supposed yeah. to be on the other side. That, yeah, that I am. Picture there, please. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Look at that shot awesome. of Atlanta, yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, the, the shot of Hercules yeah. out of Hercules' camera is very rare yeah. where we're able yeah. to actually see Atlanta, the tow sled that um, Hercules is, is connected to. Usually, yeah. Atlanta is. It's the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know, I'm breaking the rules again. Uh, we got a little close to the wall there. I was just a little worried, and I thought I might have to pull on Atlanta, so I was getting ready to do exactly that. Okay. You got enough glory shot there, Jonathan? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. We're here for the basalt. <laughs> right. Here. Uh, Dan, can you verify are the downlights? The what? Uh, down lights. Down are lights are off. Off. And you have the medium or the mids? Stand, stand back. I get back in the box here. Okay, Gosh, you can that uh, is bring cool. your head to the left. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, why don't you uh, Why don't you come up another ten meters? Yeah. Double digit altitude is typically good good thing for Atlanta. Dan, how how high would you judge those are? Uh I, 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 I don't know. Uh give me a give me a second here, let us get sorted out and uh, okay that's good for the moment you want to bring your head to the you left you until you see Hercules yeah. in theory I want to now see the tether in Hercules and make sure we're yep. all good mm -hmm. you'll have to also look down I can look down if you want to play with your heading yeah, you can go ahead. So, Dan. Uh, stand by. Come Raj. up. Uh, come up with another uh, ten for me. Bridge is doing a minor heading change. Roger. Sorry, sorry, kids. Too much dynamics no right now. Get 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 back in the box here. The wall kind of snuck up on us. The good news is there's a wall for days. I'll just uh, I'll, I'll run up to the north a bit there. That's uh, that'll do for now, right? Yeah, perfect. Thanks. Okay, sorry, back row. Uh, I got obviously out of the box there. We are back in the box. Uh, uh, lights. You wanted to see lights. Uh. Yeah, I typically run with the downs off unless we're uh, doing a close-up of something. I just wondering, can you try turning off the mids right now? I just want to see what it looks like, please. Ah, look yeah. at that. I like that. Yeah. You want to play around here on these little... Uh... I think what I'd like to do, uh, if you can reset to the uh, port edge, I'm sorry, the starboard edge of this, to the right of the ROV, 
Um, and can we just do a, a lateral across this entire step? And because uh, you can see in the fish I've used there, what I mean, it looks like a nice step gradient, and I'll, I'll yeah, do some photogrammetry on that. Right. Yeah, and Chris, if you could drop a, a waypoint here, just in yep. case this is going to be the best we get. Uh, there was also some really fantastic stuff under us, but we had to, you know, run away. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we can go back and visit that too if you want. Dan, can you turn on the uh, upper or the mids again, just to mids, review? Mids, right uh, I got a lot more micro contrast with that. Let's let's run with the mids. Yeah. Right. Okay, I'm kind of on the right side of it here. Yep. I'm starting the data process now. Starting the data process. Ooh. Am I high enough there in the uh, stereo camera? More than high enough. Go ahead. Scoot. Right. You can scoot out the port. Scooting to port. Show us how fast Hercules can move on the side by side. Roger, 100% power. <laughs> how many beans does uh, Hercules have? Full beans. <laughs> 20 horsepower. But it flies like a hundred horsepower ROV because it's free. What do you mean free? Pretty lightweight. No, it's uh, it's not dragging around seven thousand meters of cable. It's just oh. got a little thirty meter uh, neutrally buoyant tether between Hercules and Atalanta. So, so folks uh, looking at um, satellite three, that's the image out of the three cameras. The kind of the dominant part right of there. the image is seventeen hundred cinema camera that's looking kind of straight down so that we can get the top down view um, and then the two smaller screens to the left and the right are the stereo pair of 180 degree fish eyes that um, are picking up and, and calculating all that parallax between the two points so um, that's how we'll generate a 3d model off of this I'm currently taking photos one photo per second as uh, he's uh, laterally traversing this feature and when Jonathan says parallax, that's the difference in perspective from one side to the other. And that difference is what lets people, or the software, okay, that calculate right the stereo view. There you go. You want to run over it this way once? Yeah, sure. That'll give us uh, Norbit data down. to match. Yeah. Yep. Ooh, see that cliff to our right? There yeah, I like that yep, cliff. Yep, yep. Fantastic stuff down there that we had to run away from. You want to step back to the uh, west there a little, Chris? And we'll go back down and sure thing. see what's down there. Bridge nav, two zero meters, two seven zero. It's interesting. Larry, do you think that's typical that that rock there has a completely different geometry? Uh, I, I don't think that rock came from the same spot. It came from somewhere else uh, higher. Yeah. Most likely. And falling on down. Dan, do you, have, do you have the tether to be able to do a quick spin around that rock in addition? Sure. Since we're uh, waiting for ship. I'm not waiting. If if we're waiting. No, I was going to jump off the cliff there. Yeah, let's just just do a quickie. Can do. But Dan's going to tell me he can take that as a sample on the fly. Right? Yeah. I want to see if I can roll it down the hill. <laughs> so you think that see? rock must I, have come yeah. from? Hundred yeah. percent. The teenager in me <laughs> wants to roll that rock down the hill. <laughs> Yeah, and I think it, and it, the one sitting next to me is like, yeah, 100%, let's do it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Totally. National pastime as a teenager. At least it was for me. I feel bad for all those rocks that rolled down the hill. You happy with that, Jonathan? A little bit all the, all more. All the way around. Keep on, keep on. If, um, if I go all the way around, I'm going to stuff my tail in the mud. Okay. And ruin the biz. But yeah, I'll go all the way around. I'll do. I believe in you. See my tail cam? I do. See it closer, closer, touching. All right, that's Boom. good. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll take every inch I can get. Okay. The other thing I like to do is. Uh, yeah, I Taylor, see something. I'm, I'm I still recording off. on this. I'm just going to. Keep on rolling. Sounds good. I'm taking notes as you uh, say you things and look, uh, notating what we're doing. Down. Thank you. Oh, you already are. Where'd I go? There okay, you go. So when you're set up, you're gonna look at the the wall below. Yeah, yeah we'll jump back Thanks. down there and uh, see what we see. It looks pretty. I like it. 
Look at this cliff we're about to jump off of. It looked pretty spectacular, but I had to uh, run away. So I'll come to the north, and uh, Chris at the moment is stepping the boat off uh, to the west there a little bit. So, oh look, there's something that rolled down the hill there. Uh, what's my tether wrap? So. Okay, you can uh, start coming down there. You can see out here they tried to form columns, but never quite made it. Got all distorted. Come down about uh, 10 meters a minute from it. Larry, is there uh, maybe a little faster? Come down faster. Never... Okay. 20 meters a minute. I can't. I can't. I couldn't hear you. Sorry about that. Is there a reason why they never uh, fully formed into columns? Well, I think they need to be fairly undisturbed as they're cooling. And if something happened in terms of more volcanism somewhere else, something that so while you're doing that, right, messed it up, your altitude, they don't get the chance the blue to number here really cool or the number on your screen, these, these and also your columns. sonar. So we want to keep that any sonar targets outside of the first range ring, the 20 meter range ring, and we want to keep the altitude ideally in double digits. But uh, to get into the teens. And I don't notice it, uh, and Chris doesn't notice it, but uh, let's let us know, because, yeah, we are. We are uh, trying to move you off the wall a little bit so we can drop back down. We came up, we came up quite rapidly. I think you're all right for now. I've been spot checking though, it looks great. We're going to be close. These are looking a little bit more like columns. Yeah, they? yeah, they are. It, 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 uh, and something's happened on their outside time, surface. But they're they're not right. flat and straight here. I really wish I knew but that. clearly they cooled in, a, in the same way that the, oh, the, the purely kilometer ones tutorial. have. That's really spectacular. Um, and you're going to want to turn, uh, I'm going to come under you, so if you come down to maybe 25 meters, and then you're going to want to bring your head to around to the right as I come to the south, which hopefully will take our oh, tether uh, turn out. Yeah, yeah, come down a couple more meters, just to give me a minute. That, that, uh, if we're trying to get yeah, you're going to have to come down a little more. You're going to get real close to the wall there. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, I'm going to stop here for a minute. Let's bring your head uh, to starboard. Look to the... Uh, well, those, those are really spectacular. And what's intriguing is look to the, east. The, the striations on the outside that... that yeah, they yes. almost look like a layered cake. Yeah. yeah. yeah I want to be highlighting Very everything, uniform. and Jonathan's going to get mad. <laughs> yeah, these are much more I dramatic. Like the, the little pebbles that are on top. <laughs> Wonder if one of these pebbles rolled down the hill. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's good heading. Um, now we have a visual on the wall. Uh, why don't you so try you, and drop down a little bit more. Are you in a corner there? Is there? Uh, no. You can see Herc's sonar. It's, it's no, no, I'm looking at the lens sonar. Uh, no, okay, I see. It's no, it's she's it's just, just, it was just... It was just a vestige of a... Yeah, she's really close to the uh, yeah. the cliff there, but we're, we're sneaking down. Yeah. Oh, that's great. <sighs> Yeah, I think you're good there. You can keep dropping down the boats. Uh, yeah, come down a little bit more for me. Another uh, five meters. No, not generally. Uh, Normally I, just converting you, coordinates and stuff from this? degrees to decimal, or, or from okay, degrees and minutes to decimal degrees and that sort of thing. <laughs> 